Good morning, everybody. Thank you, Richard, for that uh, great introduction. <clears throat> um, in the morning, we shall um, learn a little bit Git. Um, and I will, uh, me and uh, Diana will be taking the lessons today. Uh, we will uh, first have a Git introduction uh, and some motivations and basics. And our first break would be at 10.35, just a heads up. Um, <clears throat> um, so I guess you have a link to this uh, course page. If not, all these links are available from the HackMD, uh, which our, our colleagues will be pasting on the chat as well. So if you have any questions, please follow the instructions and go to the HackMD instead of um, the chat. Uh, the first lesson is going to be an introduction to Git. So I will um, try to motivate ourselves a little bit before we um, jump into the lesson. Uh, so as Richard said, uh, this, is a, um, this is a sort of um, um, <clears throat> collaborative learning experience. Uh, so not all the instructors know in depth of everything, but they are tried very hard to go through the lessons and uh, have it uh, organized. Um, so it's, um, we can learn together. Uh, another thing is we will not go through everything in all material. So don't worry that it's, uh, uh, if, you, if you see that some instructors are skipping, they will, um, uh, they will not go through everything. There are, there are certain things that uh, we will go through and certain things for you to do at home. Um, and then, um, um, have a, um, um, you, know, you know, like if you if you know a little bit more about a certain subject, you can go to the advanced topics as well. Uh, so Richard is a, is a Zoom. Is everything okay? Can you see my screen and my voice? Everything good? Okay. <clears throat> so uh, Git a version control system. So why do we need a version control system and what could happen if we don't have one? Uh, so we will talk about this uh, around three topics, um, you know, recording snapshots, branching, and uh, uh, merging. Uh, for that, I'm going to um, uh, sort of um, do this on, in a visual way, right? Um, can you still hear me, uh, Richard, when I get up? I can hear you. Yes, good. So uh, when you uh, talk about uh, Git, let's say documents. So you have multiple documents. This could be uh, text documents, your LaTeX um, uh, manuscript, uh, source code, um, uh, configuration files, and that sort of things. So you have version one, version two, version three. So Git provides a way to have multiple versions of the same thing uh, at the same time. So you can um, have uh, versions. Versions and Git takes a snapshot of all these versions. So you can go back to that versions or take parts of it later on. So the snapshots. So we'll uh, talk about snapshots a little bit more in the next lesson. So the snapshot is a, is a so the Git monitors your project, not individual files. Uh, it's, it's okay to have a single file in your project, but Git uh, actually monitors the, the, the folder itself. Uh, even other version control uh, systems would have uh, di maybe different uh, strategies, but we are talking about snapshots, like how it was in historic historically in a certain um, um, point in time. Then you could attach historical information. You can have historical info, like who did this, you know, what has actually happened, you know, that sort of thing, in addition to what has uh, actually been done. Uh, then we have the uh, other advantage as we are saving uh, snapshots. Let's say how version one is good, version two is good, and version three breaks. So you can go to a version that that was working, go back, you know, some sort of a, a systematic undo. So if you compare with uh, Google Docs or the other documents, uh, we have a, a more, more sophisticated, uh, more um, 
more systematic way of doing uh, uh, undos. So we have this sort of like a time machine. Not, not you know, you could can go back and uh, uh, get things. Um, and then you can, uh, you have the options to recover. So if, if something goes wrong, you can uh, always come back to the previous version. Then it provides this functionality. Um, let's say you have version one. So you have, uh, uh, you, you are not sure uh, about uh, certain things like um, you, you are not uh, fully thought through certain things and you are test certain things. So you have the version 2.1, version 2.3, version 2.2. So you have multiple versions. You could you could uh, test out different things. You know uh, different versions of the version two. Uh, we call this branches, and then you could uh, come to version three uh, by combining two of them, or maybe three of them, or one of them, and uh, discard certain things that uh, didn't work. Then it provides us with this functionality: collaboration. So you can work on multiple things at the same time without stepping on each other's toes. And it, it's also a welcoming way uh, for you to get um, contributions from others. So these aspects are more um, detailed in this motivation. So you could um, um, sort of uh, understand why, why it's, uh, this is uh, important and this could be useful for your work. Um, before we begin about this um, part about about a document, uh, um, you know how to what what would be the advantage of using a, a, a version control for a, for a document, for example, I'm going to share a short video from YouTube, uh, and this is about a proprietary um, version control system. So Git is not the only version control system. We could we have Mercury, we have uh, um, SVN and so many. So, so we, we are not uh, advocating or we are not um, um, representative of Git anyway or GitHub. We just want you to do use some uh, version control system. That's the only only thing that uh, we want to convey. Um, so let's um, let's see whether I'm sharing sound. Yes, yes. Um, so that is the the life of a document. So. You might have faced this when you are writing your thesis, for example. There are multiple versions that you have to handle, juggle every time. So a version control system could uh, systematically do this for you. So if you have any questions or comments, please use the HackMD. Uh, I can't see it uh, at the moment, but uh, I think our colleagues will um, help you with that. Um, let's see how am I on time. Yes. <clears throat> Uh, let's have a look at a real uh, repository, how it looked like. So when you land on a repository like this, um, first thing you would see uh, are, the, are the commits that has happened here. If you see, there's a 1,924 commits. So each of these commits represents um, the snapshots I was talking about earlier. So then um, each of these snapshots, they have um, certain um, historical uh, information attached to it. Uh, for example, if you see here uh, a title, and then there'll be more details that you could uh, have. And each of these title uh, uh, commits, we call them, have a specific ID as well. <clears throat> um, then we could um, see that um, if, you, if you go and see the insights uh, and the network, you, you could see how the historically the, the narration worked out, you know, the how, how it was uh, built, uh, the, the branching and the merging that I was talking to you uh, before. So you can see uh, how people have tested out certain things and uh, joined with the mainstream. Uh, and you could also see the <clears throat> contributors who contributed um, you know, who, who made the commits. So this, this the numbers does not necessarily mean um, a lot of work, um, uh, like it, it does mean a lot of work, but the numbers does not re directly reflect to how much they have contributed. It's a number of commits, but it, it, it's a good indication of um, who, has, who are the authors. Um, in addition to that, uh, for example, 
uh, if you want to uh, reproduce something, you, you want to test out uh, something uh, uh, by yourself, like reproduce something, you can have uh, specific um, uh, code blocks that you could uh, use in discussions, like without, uh, uh, without telling, you know, uh, line 44 of this block, you could send a um, link with that, uh, with that line, uh, with that uh, piece of code um, to your uh, um, to your colleagues, uh, and you could also see uh, forks here that you learned. Um, I think in day two or day three. So um, there are other people who got copies of this, uh, and then um, they are working on it. Uh, we will see why why that is um, uh, useful rather than uh, contributing directly to this. Um, directly to the main repository. Yes, and then you have a release history, which is uh, which, uh, which has um, uh, some sort of um, like a frozen in time versions of the, the code that you could go back and use. Uh, this is very example, very useful, for example, if you use it for a uh, paper, a publication. Uh, so you could refer to the, in the publication you use version 1.2.1. 2 .1. So you can, uh, um, refer to that in that way. Um, after that, uh, we are directly jumping into the, the, the basics. Um, oh, sorry, before we go into the basics, can I ask a question? Yes. Um, and the question is, we, there was a bit of um, confusion about when the next break will be. So it will be nice if, if it's possible for you if we do a break at the end of the hour and not after one and a half hours, is that possible? So the, the goal uh, would be approximately 10 minute break every hour because I think one and a half hour without break could be a bit long if it's possible to adjust. Uh, can I do this and uh, come back to you? Um, so I think the video was interrupted for a moment. I didn't mean now, I, I meant at the end of the hour. Can, uh, can, can you send me a message? Do you want to stop now or what, what, what was it about? No, sorry for confusion. So I, what I was just asking is, can we have a break at the end of the hour, not now? Hmm. Uh, can I come back to you in another 15 minutes? Sure. Yes, okay. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> where was I? Um, Yes, so I said uh, we are going to jump into the, the, the basics uh, to learn uh, something about uh, uh, Git. So um, I will do this on the, on the terminal. Um, and as you can see my uh, terminal, I will um, uh, I'll go, I'll go through this. So the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the material, it will say that, um, uh, it's, it's a type along uh, exercise, but when I'm typing uh, due to this uh, like remote uh, workshop procedure, um, first I will demonstrate and then we can go to breakout rooms and uh, practice on our own. So if you look closely um, on my top window, it will say, watch me when, I, when I'm expecting you to watch. And then uh, it will say, type with me when I'm uh, like expecting you to type. So at the moment, it's just um, watch. Right? Um, in addition, the history will be recorded on the top and also there's a Google doc that's um, uh, that I created. Uh, that will be linked from the HackMD that um, that will be, uh, that'll, that'll record everything I type, like it, just in case if you want to type and uh, copy and paste 
or uh, later on uh, I'll, i'll keep that for a day or two so you can go and uh, uh, have a look what uh, what has uh, been done um so as uh, as we discussed in the uh, previous lesson um git records um, snapshots it takes um, a record of your state of the current folder um, um that git is monitoring uh, so you have to keep in mind that um, git is a two step process so whenever you want to uh, um record something on git so you have to uh, first ask git to do that so git will not automatically do things um so uh, you have to tell ex git explicitly what um, what you want to do so it's it's, it's uh, related to uh, it's been um, compared to taking a photo here for example so if you have a photo uh, we are taking a photo you have to focus things first so you have to uh, include everybody who's uh, going to be in the photo first but if you just by focusing it, it doesn't mean the photo will be recorded so the next step you have to take the press press the shutter button that is when the archiving take place that is why the when the when the uh, when the recording uh, become permanent so don't take liter literally like taking a photo but you know it's just a com comparison it's a two step process first you focus the things that you want you collect everything that you want to be uh, archived to committed and then you commit it uh, let's demonstrate that part um in order to do that uh, i'm going to my um desk uh, my home folder so it's it's easier for me to find uh, so you could you could do this in in whatever folders uh, sub folders that you want but during the lesson it's easier for me to um locate back what i was um, typing then um that for that reason i'm going to go to my um uh, home folder uh so after going there one of the commands that i'll be using a lot would be git status so i'm going to ask git uh, before that i'm going to check my version just in case you know uh, git is installed and configured properly so if you, if this gives an error during the uh, during the breakout room um, you could get some help and then git status so the git status um throws an error so this is this is one um, um one situation the error is a good so this means git is not tracking your entire home directory so if you if it's if it's tracking if you, if you get something git status other than an error something like this here that means your home directory is you have you have experimented certain things and certain git commands could be extremely slow so here i go i go here and i'm going to start uh, uh, my my work by creating a directory um okay the first first mistake i did uh, i um, i typed the spelling wrong for the make directory so i'm going to uh, type it again and i'm going to change into that directory and now i am here again git status again it's not um, git is not doing anything and there are no files no files no hidden files only the current directory and the, and the past directory then uh, the first thing that you want to um do when you are uh using git is uh, if if you compare to many other uh, version control systems um you don't need to set up a server or anything you can just start Uh, using git on your laptop immediately and then you can uh, use the collaborative nature of git uh, to configure central server for example so i could start git using git right away only thing i need to do is the uh, is to issue a command called git eight then i will uh, set the git status again now it says on branch no commit says nothing to commit if i ask for the files nothing but if i ask for the hidden files as well you will see a git folder created here dot git so this is this is where everything is recorded 
those snapshots, the histories, those uh, historical comments, everything is included in the Git. So if you delete this uh, folder dot Git, then everything is gone. And if you fold, if you move this to some other place, that will work. You know, the all the old history and everything is in, in contact, uh, in, in intact. <clears throat> Then for this uh, example, we are not going to uh, talk about um, um, like source code or anything. So in, instead of that, uh, what we're going to do is um, um, use a very basic uh, cooking recipe. So everybody could relate to these things and uh, understand the Git basics, then you can uh, go for the advanced uh, things. So in this directory, there are no files as I, uh, as I showed you before. So here I'm going to um, uh, create a recipe for uh, the Goku Miller recipe. For this, um, I'm going to create a file called um, instructions, instructions.txt. And I'm going to use the editor called nano here. So you can use uh, whatever editor, terminal editor you want, or you can use uh, like a, like a um, um, uh, an editor that saves metadata alongside. For example, you can use Microsoft Word or anything because if you use that, it'll it'll be it'll be it'll contain uh, more information than you actually type. So it's uh, it might get confused. So you can use Nano, and there are a list of there's a list of um, <coughs> editors given here. Now you can use V, Im, uh, you can use Emacs, and uh, and there are other other many options. So in this uh, file, I'm going to uh say that first i'm going to um chop the avocados right then i'm going to uh, say that i'm going to chop the onions and then uh, some lemon uh, and so on Squeeze lemon, add salt, and mix well. Right? So I'm going to um, include that information. And then I'm going to um, save this with Control O because I'm using uh, Nano. Then I'm going to exit with Control X. And let's see the file. So this is uh, what I typed. And then I'm going to create another file. Nano ingredients in that ingredients file uh, I'm going to include um, two avocados one line and two tablespoons of salt then I'm going to use the control O again to save control X to come out, then I have this file. Okay. Then I'll ask git status again. Then the git status would uh, tell me that there are some uh, untracked files. Uh, as he, uh, as I told you several times now, mentioned this several times, that git will not do anything until you explicitly ask it to do. So then I'm going to say git add ingredients, git add instructions. Now that focusing has taken place, you know, now it's focused. If I ask git status, it has collected everything. It has collected all the information that could be archived, that should be committed. Then I'm going to say, git to take and save this uh, information. Git commit minus M, adding ingredients and instructions. Now Git has recorded uh, that change. If I ask Git status, it says on branch master, we'll learn about branches um, uh, tomorrow. Uh, nothing to commit, but into is clean. So this is the status that we want our Git repository to be. So everything is committed. 
Um, then I can ask, uh, like, let's say I used this here, git commit minus m. So what does this minus m mean? So if you if you come across um, uh, like you want to understand, you want to learn more about these commands, or you are not sure, like you copied something from the internet and you want to see what it does, then you can ask some help from git itself. It help commit. Then in here you will. Uh, you will see that the minus m I typed was for a um, dash m is for a message dash m for a message that um, to associate with that. So that is about that historical information that I told will be attached to the um, the commit itself. To get out of this, you have to press the q q letter q in your keyboard. So I type this letter to come out. Um, then uh, we can ask Git about uh, what has happened. Uh, you know some uh, um, log information about this. You can ask got Git log, so it will say that uh, this file has been committed with this um, message, and this is the author, uh, and this is the time, and it has given a very unique ID. So please discuss why 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 it is uh, important to have like a. Uh, unique ID like that instead of uh, having a numerical one, two, three, or ABC, uh, something like that. We could uh, discuss that a little later or in your uh, breakout rooms. Uh, in addition, this tells you that the author is already recorded, the time is already recorded. So in the message, these are redundant information. You don't have to type in the uh, detail that who did this. It will be all automatically recorded. Uh, this head and master. Uh, we, you will um, learn more about it in the in the, in the branch uh, section. So this head means uh, it's, it's something like the tape record head. You know, if you if you record something, if you uh, press the record button, this is where the recording will start to. Uh, this is where the recording will start. Then um, from this uh, information, you can see that if you want a shorter version. Shorter, shorter description of this. If you have a lot of log messages, it will be easier to see only the um, messages. Or if you want um, um, statistics about it, you know what has happened, and in, in a shorter form, uh, even you could combine these things. These things you can experiment. Uh, on your own uh, by com uh, reading the, um, the man page and also discussing with your um, <coughs> uh, break room instructors. Um, so what we do is uh, we're going for exercise now. Uh, so um, so Radhawan, uh, can you explain me about, about it again? So my break, break plan was uh, at 10.36. No. You said what? No, I apologize. Keep your current plan. I will, it was a misunderstanding on my side. So I okay, was, okay, thank, yeah, okay. keep your plan. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry about that. Uh, so, um, but it is correct that uh, we have been uh, here for one hour, uh, like half an hour teaching and half an hour intro. So what we will do is we'll slightly... Uh, Modify that plan a little bit. So what Radhawan says is correct that we should have had a, a break already. Um, so this exercise, you have, uh, let's see how, how long you have. Uh, you have 20 minutes. So what we do is we'll make a 30 minutes break for the exercise. And during the, uh, during the exercise, I will recommend that you take a 10 minutes break. You, you take a 10 minutes break. Negotiate with your uh, with your breakout instructors to have a ten minutes break included in this uh, exercise. So let's let's see what the what the exercise is about. So first thing you should do is do what I did here. And if you see if you face any issues, you could use the HackMD or your uh, exercise helper or the expert helpers to get help. So go, uh, go to your home directory or a directory that you're comfortable with, create a direct, uh, directory called recipe. Uh, so it's, it's better that you use the same names so it will be comparable and easier to help. Use the git status to find out the, find out the status of the git and then uh, init the git 
uh, Git init. So start using it. Using Git. So as I said, you don't have to configure servers or anything. If the Git is there, you can start using it. Create two files. One is instructions. One is ingredients. Include the information here. Go through this. Do the Git add. Git commit. And then you come to the same level as me with uh, Git log online. One commit. Right. After that, start the exercise. Try what git diff do, do. So for that, you need to add. So if you read here the instructions carefully, it says add half an onion to the ingredients files. And then add the word enjoy to the instructions files. File at the end, at the bottom of the file. And then without doing git add or git commit or anything, try with the git diff command. Then do the git add and then git commit and try with uh, other, other some command shown here and try git add, uh, git commit without uh, dash m, for example. Uh, so this exercises, uh, exercise, I think it's, it's very clear. Uh, you know, it's, it's very simple uh, in, in the sense of git. You know, there's, there are not, not much git, um, um, like uh, complicated git commands involved. But for the first time users, this, there might be issues. So please discuss. Um, and um, do that. So then, okay, welcome back. Um, so I will uh, do the exercises with you uh, just to check um, how it went. Um, for this, First thing I'm going to do is um, add the half an onion and um, the word enjoy to the instructions files and uh, check it with the git diff. I have the files now like this, ingredients like this, and in instructions like this. So I'm going to add two more, one line each for this. Uh, let's start it diff here and see what happens. It's good. There's, uh, there's no, I, I don't see any difference now. In ingredients, I'm going to add a half an onion to the end of this line. <clears throat> okay. Um, save that with control A. Control O, exit with control X. And our instructions. I'm going to add the word enjoy to the end of this line. And I'm not going to have a new line afterwards. Um, that should be the last line there. Control O to save, control X to exit. So the ingredients file is like this, and instructions file is like this. Then I'm asking Git, what has changed since uh, what I told you last? So I'm checking against what Git knows and uh, what has been changed since. It will tell me uh, some um, very, very detailed, it will give me a very detailed uh, output. So it says uh, I'm comparing these in, uh, ingredients files now. The difference between what I have and what you have is that you have one line extra, and that line is half an onion uh, that, uh, that is added. So this plus sign means it's added. So these colors might be different in your, in your terminal, and you might not get colors at all. But these details, this um, plus sign, for example, it will be, be there. Um, and then uh, it compares the instructions files, right? <clears throat> and it, um, it tells me that uh, there's a difference between what Git knows and what I have is the word uh, enjoy uh, at the end of this slide. Mm. Then I'm going to uh, add the only one file, git add ingredients. So I added this file and I'm going to commit it. Commit with the message as I did before, add half and onion. 
let's do the git log. So it's uh, now two commits now. Uh, then I ask git status. So there's one more file in unfocused uh, status. No, it's not being collected by git uh, for archiving anything. Then I'm going to ask git diff again. So it tells it doesn't uh, tell me about these uh, ingredients files now. Now it tells about the instructions files. So because git, uh, what git knows about the ingredients file and what I have are the same. So it's not uh, give me a diff of that. So here it's an enjoy line. So I'm going to do the git add instructions. And I have the git diff, then it's, it doesn't tell me. There's, there's no difference uh, between what git knows and what I, what I know. But if I ask git status, it is not committed yet. It is in the staging area now. So how, there's a way to, if you <clears throat> do the man page for the git diff, you will, you will see that git diff dash dash staged would give you the difference. So the normal git diff not will tell you now, but you could also ask what is the difference between the stage, the the add stay add uh, the the when you when you did the add it it, it stayed the file. What is the difference between the stage and the git repository? What what is git recorded? So now um, it's focused, but it's not archived. So you could uh, now I'm going to say git commit commit. But I'm not going to give the dash m. I'm not going to give a message for this. I'm going to press enter. So when I press enter, what Git, Git, Git will say is that, yes, I'm, I will make this commit, but you have not attached any historical information for this. You have not given me any metadata. You didn't uh, give me a proper message. So later on, if somebody comes and uh, uh, maybe that somebody is yourself in the future, comes and checks what has happened in this, um, uh, commit, it might be difficult to understand. So uh, they might have to open the file and go through this and it's too, too so you, you have to attach some details. So for that reason, I'm not going to commit this, but I'm going to do is the Git will tell you, I'm going to stop here and I'm going to give you a chance to attach a message to this. So here, Nano is popped up. So if you had uh, configured Git according to what uh, setup instructions said, you, you will get a pop-up message. Here. So the pop-up uh, pop window here for the uh, message. So my default editor is nano, it has uh, come out. So you might get v, vim, for example, here. So here I'm going to um, <clears throat> type a message. I added the, added the word enjoy, right? I'm going to save with control O, control X. Now, git status, everything is good. Git, git log, one line, three uh, commits. So that was um, basically the, um, the the exercise the, that you had to do. Uh, you should have ended up with uh, three or more commits, uh, uh, depending on uh, what you, if you tried more things, you might have more commits. Um, then uh, another thing, but what you could do is, let's say you want to see what what went 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 on on this commit? So there are other other uh, other commands given here like, as optional exercises and some advanced commands that you could use. Uh, one uh, very useful command is git show. You can say git show. You can type git show, and you can use this hash. Uh, one more thing you would uh, see. Okay, let me let me so um, scroll back up a little bit. Uh, yes. So then uh, you will see that this hash here. So if I if I say git show and this hash, it will tell me what has happened. So this is the time that we added the included the included work files. So it's it's comparing with null. That means you know nothing existed before that. Now we have uh, we have this uh, file. So that is comparing with uh, nothing to something here. So then you have a lot of uh, added lines uh, with plus sign. Uh, and then for the um, instructions files, uh, the same way, um, because there are more things to be displayed here, you'll see this um, two dots here. 
So that means there are more things to be displayed. I can use my arrow keys to um, go down and see all the details. Right. Now it's end here. It means like, you know, I, I, I'm, uh, I'm, I have seen everything that I, I should have seen. Um, yes. So that is git show. So you could, uh, you can press the Q. The, this is the key, Q. I type Q to come out of this. Um, git log one line again. Um, instead of if I show git log, you will see the full hash message. So you'll see that in this commit, only the first six characters are shown here uh, in the git log one line, a shorter form. And that is enough to be used as references, reference. So if you want to show that commit, you can use that only six characters, but it, it refers to this whole big hash, but you don't have to do it. Only six, it's so unique that the six would be a um, representative um, string for the whole hash. So it's not that two hashes here that you see, but it is only the first six are taken. Mm. Yes. I think that's the exercise. There's something about ignoring files. I will uh, come back to that when everybody has returned to the main room. Okay, welcome back everybody. <clears throat> Hope you had a good exercise and a 10 minute break. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> One question um, asked here um, is that um, um, why did I directly jump into the terminal? <clears throat> is that a must to using it uh, or any other version control system? Um, so when you um, start using the concepts and uh, it's kind of easy to explain these things uh, on a terminal. But it doesn't matter that it doesn't mean that you can't use the graphical user interface. <clears throat> For example, I created this, um, you know, some simple file. So if you want to um, edit that, you can go and edit it on the Google. Um, adding um, two. And then you could have a commit message here. Comment about adding line. And then commit changes, and it will be there. And if you uh, check the history, it's there. The git log is here. Git log one line is here. And git show is here. Git show is here. Everything is here on the, um, on the GUI as well. So we'll be doing um, like a lot of stuff here. And, um, we're contributing to other repositories and uh, branches and merging. All those things, you know, at, at, at to some point, it's you could do it in the graphical user interface. Um, but um, so there's no but, you know, if, if you want to use the graphical interface for contribute something, just go ahead. Um, the reason that um, that started using on the terminal is easier to explain the concepts more clearly. Uh, what's what's behind the scenes? Uh, less black boxes. Uh, other question was, um, why, why I use nano? Um, you know, it's, it's just a personal preference and also it's, um, it's easy to get start using. Uh, for example, I have seen people going into Vim and don't know how to come out. Uh, I forgot you. I forgot how to come out, right? So, uh, and Emacs, you know, uh, gedit. Um, can one of our colleagues uh, give me some examples of more uh, editors? Was it um, gedit and recommended one for Windows? I guess uh, you'll find more uh, list of here on the <clears throat> on HackMD as well. Uh, and let's see more uh, things. So one thing I was asked to mention was that HackMD is the is your place. No, that's the place you ask questions. Uh, that is to sort of um, uh, 
so contact the instructors for example so only 71 people uh, or 72 now uh, online uh, here uh, please use this place um, to edit so if you have any doubt about how to you know have a list for example don't worry about it type in your uh, answer here um, and then somebody will help you to fix it don't worry about format the the content is the important things um, nano why use nano um, yes breakout rooms who is possible rather than typing git add two times two different files could you add git add? yes yes you can add multiple times uh, but you have to make sure your 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 commit is meaningful. Don't add git asterisk. You know, add everything and commit. So so your your commit should tell a story. You should add something that makes sense together. Uh, it's okay to add multiple you know, files. Yes. Um, yes. So you can go back and forth. Uh, nothing nothing is lost. So if you uh, in the, the exercises we use. Um, um, like the, the things we do, uh, it keeps everything um, um, in its um, record. So nothing, if, 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 if we try to do something that will uh, lead to loss in information, it will prevent us from doing that actually. Yes, and then uh, I'll start the next session with, uh, with the informal important message from uh, Linus uh, Tuval. So Linus uh, is the person um, who's, who created this um, Git to sort of message uh, to manage the Linux uh, kernel? So um, at the end, he said something about performance, and I will check that later. So Git, um, um, as you said, it takes snapshot of your projects and you keep track of it. Uh, and it do, do, do this in a very efficient way, like rather than we keeping a lot of copies, when Git keep multiple versions of these uh, snapshots, it uses less space and more efficient um, way to do it. Okay. Uh, anything else? Uh, did I miss anything else? Uh, Tur, uh, Richard, uh, Radwan? Or Diana? Uh, did I miss anything? Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Oh, yeah, that's good. So, um, Thur, you told me something about that I should mention, but I just forgot what it was about that discussion. Yes, double yeah, quotations. Um, so, can you share that experience a little bit about uh, whether to use single or double quotations, Thur? Uh, I don't think it was. Too important. Uh, I mean, it's recommended to use double quotes. I never use single quotes. Uh, but if you use single quotes, then you can run into problems if you're writing English words like don't or I'm or something like that. Okay. So then um, my colleague uh, Diana will uh, start the next session using Git staging area. Um, um, is there any question? that I missed to uh, answer. Let's see if I give the floor. Dan, are you ready? Yes, I am ready. ready. Uh, so we have a um, little bit of a change of plan because of the, the break change. So now we don't take this break now because it's already taken. Uh, so you could um, you know, sort of extrapolate uh, what well, how the timing would be. Um, and uh, keep on, please keep on using the hack and day. Okay, go ahead, please. Okay, is it okay if I take uh, the screen sharing? Please do. So let's see. Does this look okay? Yes. Yeah, it's, uh, it looks good. I can see your web page. Okay, great. Can you hear me all right as well? 
I think sound quality is very good unless it moves a uh, little bit. It it creates a like a like a scratchy noise. But if if it's still, it's good. Okay. Okay. Great. So I uh, I thought I would start this uh, second part uh, of the lesson with a short summary uh, from what uh, Sabi has been teaching. And uh, basically, what you learned before the break is how to initialize a Git directory uh, together with a Git command, or how to add files to the staging area, how to commit, most importantly, and two very important commands, which I think you should excessively use, especially if you're a beginner, is the git status and uh, the git diff. So always, if you have modified a file, um, feel free to add it to the staging area or not, and use diff to see what the changes between your working directory is and the staging area. And that is the, the best way to actually make sure that your commits uh, make sense. So um, um, we are going to go now. Um, we are going to learn more about how to use uh, the Git uh, staging area and how, especially how to use it in order to make uh, nice and uh, clean commits. So uh, um, let's assume that uh, you are working on a developing uh, code, as I, uh, uh, I'm sure that many of you do. And of course, the current uh, version of the code is, uh, is a very important uh, thing. Uh, but equally important is the history of your code. You do want to know where you have, when you have had the different features of the code in which uh, files were these introduced, what was the reasoning between, uh, uh, behind uh, introducing these features. You also want to know what the difference between different versions is and how can you maybe track back uh, when something in particular was introduced and, and maybe uh, um, uh, track some, some, back, uh, some, sorry, some bugs. Uh, that may have been introduced along the way. So history is, is very important. And, uh, and uh, having clear commits is, uh, is uh, helping um, to have an organized code. So uh, let's just spend uh, one minute now to, uh, to look through these examples, which basically share the commit messages of, um, of different commits. And I will give you all one minute and please uh, uh, use the HackMD to, uh, to write what are the advantages and uh, possibly disadvantages of the, of the way uh, commits have been uh, uh, recorded in these different examples. So uh, I'm going to go to the HackMD page as well and just add a line for this discussion. And, and those of you that can use the HackMD, please, uh, please, as I said, uh, feel free to add some pros and cons of these different examples. So we'll use one minute for that. Okay, great. some very nice uh, comments coming in. So I will try to share uh, this uh, hack and day for a little bit. No? My window is too big, hold on. Thank you. 
input still coming in, but let me do a short uh, summary as well. So in the first example, uh, the, the negative thing is that all the disadvantages is that several features are included in one commit. And uh, it is always best to separate these uh, different features into different commits. And uh, this is basically what is done in the second example, which is uh, far superior to the, to the first one. The third example is particularly bad. One should never wait to, uh, 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 one should not wait too long before committing the changes that uh, you have done to your code. And also, and also the commit message itself is not very useful. You know, basically as one uh, of you have, has uh, commented, it's impossible almost to know what are the changes which uh, have been uh, introduced in this case. Example four is uh, better. I mean, it's uh, in the commit messages are quite detailed and it's good because it is easier to refer to it later. Let's say in one year or maybe a few months time later when you want to know what you have done. The negative thing about uh, this example is that some of the commits contain changes in several features which may not uh, be related. And as I said before, it's always good to keep different features in different uh, commits. Uh, the fifth commit is well clean and organized, but these commit messages actually do not tell us what has actually been uh, implemented, what is it that uh, has been changed. So it's, uh, it's not so good from, uh, from that point of view. So, so what is the bottom line? Um, by looking from uh, looking from these examples, is that we want to have clear and helpful commit messages. That's very important. We also want to have a logical change spread over several commits. We basically want to know what, uh, why, why have we done these commits, and uh, and uh, they should be more or less related uh, uh, in some uh, some sense. We should also not mix uh, different features in uh, one uh, commit. And, and also quite important is to say, or what most important is to save often. And I would uh, like to stress that, especially when you're starting out, uh, starting out, it's better to save more often than you think you need. So, um, so uh, in the following, uh, we are going to learn actually how to use the interactive command in order to uh, choose what to commit among uh, the modified, different modified files of the code or different uh, files which have been uh, modified compared to the last commit. And uh, the aim of uh, using interactive committing is to have all related changes in one commit and, uh, and uh, the unrelated changes in, uh, in different commits. So this goes along the uh, the discussion that um, that we just had. So um, the the command for interactive committing is git commit dash dash patch or git commit uh, sorry git commit uh, dash uh, patch uh, sorry git commit uh, dash p uh, for short and. Um, And basically what, uh, what this command is going to do is to tell Git, is going to uh, uh, inform Git, please check all the files that have been modified since the latest commit and, uh, and then signal um, uh, which, uh, or well ask which, uh, which of these uh, files or changes I uh, would like to have uh, included in the next commit and uh, which ones, uh, uh, one should skip for now, and um, and one uh, uh, one uh, useful uh, uh, option here is the S one, so which stands for split. This is useful if you have, for example, if you have made several changes in uh, in the same file, and uh, but you still wish to uh, um, to uh, incorporate only part of the changes to this file in uh, the next commit. And then, of course, a very useful uh, uh, option is Q, which aborts everything. Let's say you have so many changes um, when you're doing this interactive committing that you get overwhelmed and you just want to abort everything, or simply you run out of time. So, um, um, 
Before, uh, before we go through this uh, interactive committing in one exercise, I would like to mention that you can use this uh, dash P or dash dash patch option together with uh, the, sorry, together with the uh, Git uh, uh, checkout, the Git reset and the Git uh, add commands as well. And especially with, uh, with Git add is very helpful because then you can uh, um, uh, stage just some selection of the uh, of the modified files. Okay, so I'm going to just uh, resize my window here so that I can bring out the terminal. Okay, can you see my terminal? Yes. So um, everyone, please feel free to uh, uh, type along during, during this uh, exercise. I'm just going to clean this up. Um, let's see. Going to use uh, somebody's recipe for this example. Excuse me, I cannot see the terminal. It's just like the share screen from Sabris, I think. So what I see is just a hack MD. What you see is just a hack MD. Yeah. Does anyone else have this problem? Yes. Okay. Just so I can also see the right thing. Okay, good, good. So, uh, so let's see. Um, what we are going to do is uh, is uh, make two changes in this file, instructions uh, txt, at uh, both the top and the bottom of the line. So I'm going to open this uh, using bi, but you can use uh, whichever editor that uh, you prefer. And then uh, I'm going to uh, say that, oh, uh, I should, uh, Let's say that I want to modify this second line and I say that maybe I want to chop onion finely in fine pieces, let's see. And uh, then I, uh, I'm going to say that uh, you may mix well using a blender, for example. And I'm going to save these changes. And um, I am going to now type git status and see what has happened. So um, what, um, what I am told is that I have modified these instructions, txt. The file is not uh, staged, so it's, uh, it's just uh, modified. Uh, and I'm going to also uh, do git uh, diff and see what are the changes now in my uh, um, working uh, directory compared with um, uh, what I had previously. So basically I have added, I have removed this line chop onion and I have added chop onion in five, uh, uh, sorry, in fine pieces. And also I have uh, changed uh, this line at mix while using the blender. Okay, so to do the interactive uh, committing, then I simply type git interactive dash dash patch or just dash p. Oh, okay, misspelled. Interactive, sorry. Oh, sorry. This is so embarrassing, Git. So, uh, uh, so what I see is uh, basically a prompt asking me, would you like to stage uh, these uh, changes in uh, in the uh, instructions file. So I see that I have these modifying changes to and then also at uh, uh, another change like uh, 
uh, at Mix while using a blender. And then because I, uh, I would like to commit these uh, two changes in two different commits, I am going to use the S option, which is going to basically split the changes in this file into, uh, uh, into two. So then uh, the first uh, change shows up chop the onion in five, uh, uh, sorry, in fine uh, pieces. And I'm going to say, yes, I would like to, uh, to uh, use this in my uh, next commit. And then the second one I'm going to uh, keep um, as modified, but not add it to my commit. So then I'm going to uh, uh, type N. And then I'm going to add the commit uh, message. And uh, then let's say that, uh, uh, I'm going to, I have changed instructions. Okay. And then uh, I'm going to uh, use git, uh, this command again, git commit uh, dash dash patch. And I'm going to uh, commit the second, um, change and that is uh, at the, uh, sorry, mix while well using the blender. So yes, stage this hunk and uh, I'm going to add a commit message. Okay. And now if I type git log dash dash one line, I can see basically that uh, I have uh, introduced uh, two new commits. Basically I have changed the instructions uh, by both uh, um, chopping on and finding and uh, possibly mixing with a blender. So uh, the question uh, uh, to ask ourselves now is when do we actually want to use uh, interacting committing? And as you can see, I barely use it because I actually don't even remember it. Very sorry for that. So interactive committing is okay to uh, use if you have a rather limited number of modified files or line. But uh, but if you um, but if uh, your changes are too many or uh, or uh, too complex, let's say you have many many different changes in one particular file then one solution is to uh, use the staging area. So um, every time you modify a file, you may decide whether you want to add this change uh, to your next commit, or you just want to keep this modification in, uh, in your uh, working directory. And one of the very nice features of the, of the staging area is that you can also change your mind and uh, unstage one of your uh, changes. Um, from uh, the staging area. So um, there are many analogies with, uh, um, uh, with the staging area and feel free to add to the heck and be some analogies uh, that you may think of uh, yourself. And uh, I am going to just uh, uh, give the one uh, with the shopping receipts as an example. So let's uh, assume that you want, for example, to go uh, shopping and you also need to buy uh, things for uh, work, but you also need to buy uh, things uh, for um, home and uh, you, do, you would like to have two separate receipts for these uh, different um, uh, lists of items. So uh, it's of course a very bad idea to go through the store and get all the uh, all the things you may need for uh, home pay and then go uh, again uh, to the store and uh, and uh, get all the things that you may need for work and uh, and pay uh, so this is inefficient annoying it may also uh, take uh, uh, more uh, time and what you can actually do is uh, that you go to store and you put everything in your basket you may still want to separate the different items in different parts of, uh, of your basket so that uh, it's easier to sort them later on. Uh, you go to the checkout. So you put your uh, home stuff, for example, on the, on the conveyor belt. 
So this uh, has the analogy of the git add command. Basically, when you put uh, things on the conveyor belt, you're actually staging the files that, uh, that you want to, uh, to commit. And um, you um, may use the git diff state, uh, dash dash staged to check uh, what is the difference between uh, uh, the staged items and, uh, and the ones you uh, 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 the ones uh, compared to your uh, last commit. And then you can also uh, uh, choose, uh, um, you may uh, compare, for example, the items between your uh, uh, working directory and the staged area. So in analogy, uh, the difference between the conveyor belt and the basket. Uh, and uh, this way you make sure that uh, all the things that you do want to uh, commit later on are, um, are uh, in the staged area. And then uh, you may pay. Uh, so you, uh, the analogies here is uh, the git uh, commit command. And then you may redo, uh, repeat, sorry, repeat this for the work stuff. So you take the items from your basket, you put them on the conveyor belt. So it's like git add and then you uh, git commit. And then this way you have, so these two different uh, um, commits for your home and uh, work uh, items. So how can we uh, uh, view the staging area? So the, the staging area is basically a middle ground between the working directory and uh, the committed uh, version. You may also uh, uh, refer to it as uh, the index. And um, um, so most of the work that, uh, that uh, so all the, whenever we change a file or uh, several files, we are changing it in our working directory. And uh, of course we can commit uh, these, uh, these um, directly using the git command. So either git command dash dash patch or using the git command dot, uh, sorry, uh, git command, uh, git commit uh, dash a, which is going to automatically add all the modified files to the staging area. Now it is um, uh, more convenient if, uh, if we are selective about uh, which modifications we want to add or what we want to have staged and, uh, and only commit uh, the ones uh, that, uh, that we want. So um, um, we can do um, this using, uh, so we add the items, uh, sorry, we add files to the stage area using the kit. Uh, add command, uh, and then uh, uh, we commit them uh, using the git commit. Uh, they are, we can see the differences between, uh, between the files uh, in between, uh, sorry, in between the working directory and the staged area using the git div command. And uh, if we also add the option dash dash stage to git div, then we can actually see the differences between uh, the staged uh, uh, files and the ones of the last uh, commit. So um, um, the, the commands uh, uh, git checkout, git restore, and uh, git reset are more like uh, undo buttons. And we are going to go through some examples in, uh, in the following, um, well, in the, in the next two minutes, but also uh, Sabri is going to talk about them much more in uh, detail. One important thing to remember is that this command may actually behave a bit differently depending uh, whether the file is uh, modified or not or staged or not. And it's always a good idea to use uh, git status and uh, git uh, diff to keep track of, uh, of your files. So um, here comes a list of uh, other some other useful commands. So we have uh, used, uh, well, you have seen uh, git add uh, before, but in particular with uh, the option, uh, uh, with the argument file. But if you uh, use the argument path instead of file, you can actually add all the, all the, all the modified uh, files in path to the staging area. By adding the dash uh, uh, T, 
uh, option, as I said before, you can selectively choose which of the modified files you would like to uh, add to the uh, staging area and which ones you just want to keep modified in your working directory. It's uh, also good to uh, comment here that git add is not going to uh, change your uh, working directory. So it's not going to modify the files in your working directory. It's just going to add them to the staging area. So um, the git diff uh, and git diff dash, uh, dash the stage commands. So git diff is going to uh, uh, show all the changes between the working directory and uh, the um, staged uh, area. And if we use, uh, again, the option uh, dash the stage, then we can see all the differences between the, uh, in the files between the last commit and the, the staged uh, uh, files. Uh, git uh, remove is going to remove a tracked file. And uh, we can uh, also use uh, other commands like git reset and uh, git checkout. And as I said, these are like undo uh, buttons. Uh, um, so git, uh, and again, here it may be a bit confusing because the, uh, it's uh, very good to know uh, which um, um, state a modified file is in. So if, uh, for example, uh, a file is uh, modified and staged, then you can use the git uh, reset command to uh, unstage that particular file. And if you have a fairly recent version of Git, uh, so more than 2.23, I, I think, you can also use the git restore dash dash staged uh, command, either with the argument file or pass, depending on how many uh, files you want to uh, unstage. Um, if, uh, on the contrary, you have uh, modified some one or several files in your uh, working directory, but you have not uh, staged uh, those files, but you want to revert the changes, then you can use the git checkout uh, path command, and that is going to basically check out to the latest uh, 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 committed uh, version of, uh, of those uh, files. And uh, it's, here it's important to remember that, uh, that uh, basically you are going to lose the changes in the working directory if you use uh, this command and there is no way you can revert to it. Okay, so uh, let us go through uh, two uh, different examples on how you may uh, use this command. So uh, um, let's say, for example, that you do uh, uh, changes in many different uh, files, uh, but, uh, but you realize at some point that you've done so many changes that you actually want to commit them in different uh, commits. So you may uh, use the git add command to only uh, add part of your changes to the staging area, and, uh, and then uh, use the git diff and git if uh, dash, uh, dash dash stage to, uh, to check if uh, all the needed modifications have been added to the staging area, and then you can uh, commit these changes, uh, these uh, changes. And then uh, you may repeat this with other changes in your working directory, but which have not been committed. And then again, you uh, add them to the staging area, you check, uh, the differences uh, between the staging area with respect to the working directory or the latest commit, and then you may commit uh, the changes um, that um, you want. A uh, different example is uh, how to um, to use uh, how to revert changes in the working directory. So again, uh, you want to. Uh, um, you want to save the progress of your work basically before doing a final commit. And then you do, you, um, uh, you um, edit different files and, uh, and uh, you, uh, add the, you add the files which you consider that have improved the code to the staging area. And, uh, and you also uh, may try out some, uh, some other options, but uh, you realize that, oh, this uh, change in the code is actually not making my code uh, better, uh, but it's uh, making it worse. And then you may uh, use the git checkout 
with either file or path, in, uh, sorry, only with file, a git uh, checkout file uh, in order to uh, revert uh, the changes in, uh, in that particular file. And then uh, you may commit uh, the, the changes, all the changes that you've been happy with and um, Uh, and yeah. So uh, as I said before, it's uh, it's good to remember that the staging area can also be referred to as the index. You may see that in some of the manuals or on the web, and also as the cache. So this is another uh, workflow, uh, a bit uh, similar to uh, to what we have seen uh, uh, before. So. Um, um, let's say that you are doing uh, a change to a file, to a Python script, file.py, uh, uh, and uh, you, uh, you add uh, this, um, this modification, to, you stage this modification by uh, git add file.py. Uh, uh, you may do further work on this file, and then uh, you, uh, you uh, uh, add again, uh, uh, you stage again this, uh, this change in the file, and then you may uh, move to a uh, different Python script. You do some change, you add it uh, uh, to the staging area with git add. Further work on the file, again, you, uh, you use git add to, uh, to stage it. Now, um, now uh, you may, of course, do this uh, at um, you may continue doing changes to this file, but let's say that at some point you realize that, okay, this, uh, this last change was actually incorrect and you want to revert to, uh, um, to the checkpoint four. So you basically want to undo the latest change in the another file uh, .py. And the way to do that is by using the command git checkout another file .py. And uh, once you are happy with uh, your changes, you can uh, you can uh, commit uh, uh, your changes. So um, uh, we are going to uh, take some time now in uh, breakout rooms, and we are going, going to play around with uh, these commands and the staging area. And um, uh, the idea is that we are going to do so this exercise using the uh, the staging area, and we are also going to uh, uh, use some minutes to test our understanding and see when it's good to use the staging area, and when it's uh, uh, when it's uh, better to uh, to just uh, commit without uh, this intermediate step. Okay, so uh, now uh, I will also go through this uh, this uh, exercise um, um, here. So in the recipe example, so basically the one we have used before, I'm going to make two changes to uh, both the ingredients uh, txt file and the instructions txt file. Uh, so let's see, ingredients, instructions. So I am going to, uh, add here, let's say that I do not want to uh, use onion in my guacamole. So I'm going to remove this. And then uh, I am going to um, say that I want to sprinkle with onion on top. Okay, so if I do git status now, I see that I have modified these two files, ingredients and instructions. I'm going to use the git diff command as well and see what the changes actually are. So I have um, basically removed onion from my ingredients file. Okay. And then uh, 
want to make this bigger. And uh, I have also uh, modified the instructions uh, uh, and uh, added that I want to sprinkle with some nice uh, pieces of onion. So um, obviously these do not actually go uh, uh, well together. So what I am going to do is I'm going to commit uh, only the second change. So the change in the instructions file. So I will do git add instructions. This is going to stage uh, the change in this file. And let's do git status again. So then I see I have this file staged. The ingredients is uh, modified, but unstaged. And then I can commit this change. Uh, and let me say that I have uh, added some, add some sprinkles on top. Okay. Let's see how this looks like now. So basically I have this new commit now. And then if I do git status again, let's see. I can see that I have this change in the git, uh, sorry, in the ingredients uh, file. But I realized that if I want to sprinkle with onion on top, I actually do need some uh, onion as well. So then um, what, um, what I can do, and also basically what, uh, what uh, git uh, recommends is to use this command git restore uh, file. And then that is going to disregard the changes in the working directory, which have not been staged and get back to the, to the version of the file, uh, which corresponds to the latest commit. So I'm going to do git reset and ingredients txt. So basically what happens is that I have unstaged all these files after the reset. Um, no, sorry, that has not been staged, so that is wrong. So um, I um, have to do this again, let's see what happened. So I still have the, the modified um, uh, file in a directory, so now I should do git restore and then the file ingredients txt. Okay, if I now open the file, I can see that actually it has been reverted to the latest uh, commit and that was uh, um, when it actually included the onion as an ingredient as well. So if I do git status again, I can see that uh, all um, um, that uh, that uh, the the working directory is basically uh, um, exactly the same as the latest commit. So I do not have any uncommitted uh, changes or uh, or staged files. So. Um, Let us move on to, uh, to the following questions. So when would it be better to uh, save a change as a commit? And when is it actually better to save it with um, git add? So I would say that if you have many different uh, files that uh, you have changed, then it's always better to use the staging uh, area and, uh, do not, uh, and do not commit uh, directly. It's also useful, especially if you have to, um, um, if you are not uh, unsure about uh, the, the changes that you have done, then it's, uh, it's always good to uh, stage and then you can always unstage if you think that the particular uh, change is not uh, suitable. So uh, as for the uh, second question, if it's a problem to commit uh, many small uh, changes. So I would say that, um, the history may become uh, too crowded if you commit many small changes, but if you are uh, a beginner, it's always better to commit more often than, uh, than less. And then uh, as you become more advanced, then you can always, uh, you will naturally use, uh, um, you're going, naturally going to do fewer uh, commits. So um, uh, 
As for the third question, what type of problems can occur in other version control systems without a uh, staging area? So the main advantage basically of using this, uh, uh, of having this uh, staging area is that you can, uh, you can uh, uh, rethink what uh, you want to, uh, to uh, commit or not. So you can add files to the staging area, but then you can also change your mind and uh, remove them from the staging area. So, so it's, it allows for, uh, for more flexibility when uh, it comes to uh, committing. You can, uh, you, can, uh, you can keep track of your files, you can add your modifications, but then you can also uh, uh, undo uh, some of these uh, modifications and only commit uh, the changes that you want. Um, okay, um, welcome back everybody. Hope you had a good break. <clears throat> um, so before I go to um, undo things, uh, you know, there's this, so Git is all about doing, you know, um, and you have to be very cautious when undo things. Um, before going to that part, uh, I will, uh, I will show you something that I, I, I see is important, but I, I missed in the, in the first lesson. <clears throat> it is about ignoring things. Um, so let's say um, you have some uh, files that you don't want Git to track. Git status. And let's say you have a file called uh, prg1.so. You don't want Need to know track about it. So this is an example of <clears throat> compiled programs, for example. Uh, you, you develop your program, you compile it in your system, <clears throat> and if you give the code to somebody else, the compiled code not work, my may not may not work, but they have to recompile it. <clears throat> so it doesn't make sense to uh, distribute that uh, executable or a compiled version. Or maybe there's a big data file that you don't want to um, 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 share. So then, um, um, let me um, let me do a quick uh, extension. Okay. Um, <clears throat> for this, for this, we can use a, use something called a git ignore file. Uh, we can create a file called dot git ignore and inform that git everything that ends with s so don't worry about it no i don't want you to track i don't want you to keep track of it i'm going to save that file and go out of it and the git ignore would um, look like this With the space, of course. And then if I ask git status, it's it's worrying about the git ignore file. So we had version control to git ignore, of course. So I'm going to add uh, git commit. So in this step, I'm combining the git add and git commit in one go and doing that. Oh, sorry. Uh, okay, let's just do that in the proper way. Git add. Oops, I am adding the commit. So sorry about that. Git add dot git ignore git commit minus n including the git ignore. Now I would have this file uh, prog one, but it, it will not worry about it. It's status. If I have another file, so 2.so, 
still get wouldn't worry about it. So I, there, there are some um, details here in this uh, how to get uh, ignore like multiple files and also how to use wildcards. <clears throat> so with that, let's move on to the Git. Uh, session. So basics, we did the basics, uh, we did the um, staging area, and I do things. So um, Git, uh, as, you, as you saw, it keeps track of uh, history. So uh, when you with, work with Git, you should, you should be very careful not to change the history, especially after sharing with others. So if you change the history after sharing with others, it will confuse, confuse people. So what I'm going to do is so, show you some um, um, commands that, that you could uh, use to recover from certain mistakes uh, and to emphasize in certain aspects that you shouldn't do. There, there are, uh, so you need multiple ways to, there could be multiple ways to achieve the same thing. So, uh, so um, for, for example, you could um, do something wrong and um, then uh, you know delete that commit and have another commit, for example. But a better way would be to uh, commit something on top of it, making that change. We'll have a look um, after this. <clears throat> so I'm, I'm in this lesson, so I'm going to demonstrate some uh, safe commands first, and then we'll see. So I'm in this folder. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to add, uh, so I, I'll check my git status. Status, everything, everything good. I'm going to edit this file. <clears throat> okay, let's, let's um, add something to the end of the file. Um, let's say um, mistake. Um, something okay. Wrong line. Or oh, yeah. Uh, like let's say make it more intuitive. Line to get rid of. I'm going to add that line to the ingredients file. Then the ingredients file will, will look like <clears throat> this. So there's a line that I should be I, I, I want to remove. I have not committed it yet. You know, the Git has no idea of it. So I'm going to ask it uh, diff. It says there's a line at the end and also a, a space at the end of that line. Um, then I ask the Git log. Um, just to have a good idea, some idea about it. So I'm here. So um, what I want to do is get rid of this line. I don't want that. Then you could use a command called git check out ingredients. Then if I check the ingredients files, <clears throat> that line is gone. That line is gone in a way that you could not get back because that line we add outside of Git's control and then we get got rid of it. So now that line is gone. So this is a safe uh, undo. So this is okay to do. It's a, it's a social, socially acceptable undo that you could do. Uh, so this is like, if you do something, let's say the cat run, off, run on your keyboard or like a baby got hold of the keyboard or you did something very nasty, just want to get rid of it, then uh, you could use this one. Um, because of there were some questions about um, reset and um, some staging uh, concept about the staging area. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to add this, that uh, that line to the file again. Cat ingredients. So I have the line again. I have added this. <clears throat> so the checkout is from the last information it has. So when you do the checkout without any, any arguments like this, it will return you the last version that we asked it to record. Uh, for that reason, so earlier when I said git checkout, I got the file. Here, I'm asking the git status, and I'm adding the file, git staging it. Now the file is staged. Git 
status would say modified ingredients. So for this, um, I'm going to say if you may type along as well. Let's um, let's change this um, thing. So you could also try with me. So ingredients file, I, I added a line at the end, and then I staged it. Then I asked the git diff, which says nothing, right? But staged. So this. There's a, there's a difference between staged and the committed. So there are three versions of the file. One on my um, working tree that on my directory and on the stage, which are the same. And another version uh, on the stage and the, and the last, the head of the commit, which, which are different. So if I uh, say cat ingredients, and if I say git um, checkout ingredients, and if I do the cat now, what would be the outcome? Can anybody say in the um, type type that in the check and do? That line is still there. So if you want to, um, let's say after staging, staged file. So if it is already uh, staged and you want to check out, first you should do the git reset. Take it out of the stage, bring it back from the stage and do the check it check out. Then that will bring you to the correct file. So that is the that is the diagram which explains um, uh, how uh, in the previous uh, slide. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> then uh, again, another way to uh, do a <clears throat> good, um, uh, like a, a safe undo is, I'm going to add that line again. That is that. Right. I'm going to add that file. Add ingredients. Get commit uh, including something wrong. Obviously, you now if you wrong, if you know knew it was wrong, you would be adding it. But we got to know after adding it, some adding a commit. So I'll be uh, just for demonstration purposes. Uh, git um, log one line. Okay. So then you have this uh, line to be removed. So in this um, material, there are there are options given uh, to do this. Uh, for example, you could do something like git reset hard and you know for an earlier commit uh, and get that version. Uh, I'm not going to do that part. <clears throat> Instead, I'm going to do something called a git revert. So my intention is to <clears throat> undo what I did here. So I'm going to type git for my history. Yes. Git, git revert, this hash. So the hash you should type will be different from mine. So you have to use the git log online or do, do git one line or git log to find out the hash. So I'm going to do that. So then it will give me a <clears throat> chance to say, you know, a message. So you could uh, have this message as the default or you could have your own message. So I'm going to have the default git control O, control X. Then you will see that uh, git log one one line would have a something went wrong line and reverting the something went wrong line. Let's do a diff between those two and see what the difference is. So as we did git log uh, before, you could also ask a difference between two commits. Sorry, a, a difference, difference between diff between two commits. So I'm asking the difference. So the difference is in the last, the reverted version, I have removed the line. So unless it is some password or some very sensitive information that you have included, you should always think about the, the social aspect, aspect of it. People got this uh, commit, you know, they might be working on it. They might, might have uh, improved on it. 
um, and if you remove that commit, their history got sort of distracted. You know, uh, they will um, they will not have that. They they will expect to have it and they will not see it. So a better way to do that is to uh, undo what you did and have a commit on top of it. So that is the reward. <coughs> Um, yes. Uh, and then, uh, and then you can check something. Let's say the status. <clears throat> you could also um, check out older versions of a file. For example, let's say um, when I when I did the get. Um, um, the file git uh, the cat ingredients so this file um, if you want if you if you see that you know this revert is for the last commit the, the, the commit that i have done here so let's say if you have like a like an old um, one that you want to take back so we saw that we record snapshots so and there was a question if i say version 1 2 and 3 is only could i just get back to the version 2 but no but you can get um, any version you like. But if you do multiple ads, only the last ad people know, but um, that you can't take back. So let's say, um, let's cut the ingredients here. It's half an onion. Do a gift if between this version uh, and the current version. So that is the, uh, for the instructions file. So that is the word enjoy that added. So I could also, so if I want to um, undo something that did, I did after um, that change, uh, I could mention <clears throat> that I want to check out uh, this version, for example, for the version of the instructions. Then it will let's ask its status. Status. It will get back the file and it's also staged it. Let's see here instructions. Um, the word enjoy is not there. But now I have to commit that. Commit bringing back an old version. Yes. Git log online. So, bring back. so that undo, I didn't go and try to change history. Um, I used, I took something from the history and made a new commit. So that's a more social responsible way to do it. Um, rather than um, going back and change history. Uh, is there anything in the HackMD that I should be worried about? Let's see. Uh, please refresh and uh, uh, log out, like if you're not uh, typing anything, uh, just to make it more responsive. Yes, you could do uh, ignore a directory uh, and um, more details are given here. Yes. Thank you for that answer. Uh, what include, yes. So the git ignore would um, ignore that file that doesn't, me doesn't make sense to share with others. Yes, so it's all right, git checkout, all right. So you will lose what you did uh, outside of Git. So you, you edited the file, you didn't ask it to, Git to more, uh, track it. So when you put Git checkout, everything you typed afterwards will be lost. Yes, so you, that file should have been committed at least once. So if, if there's no file in the Git, uh, if, it doesn't know, if the Git doesn't know about that file, then it can't check you out that file. 
Yes. So there are other um, um, like uh, Git uh, the ways to undo things, but I only showed you more socially responsible um, methods that you could use. Next, we're going to have a summary. Uh, let me check the HackMD again. Um, yes, fine. Good. Yes. Yes. Juho, um, are you here as well? I think you all left the call because some other event. Some other event. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, next day, so the. If I have a summary of this, let's go back. Yes. So we did. We learned some uh, basics. Um, um, uh, I apologize for people who already know some Git, but we we, uh, we need to get everybody on the same <coughs> level for the next um, lessons. We learned about the two stage process of git add and git commit. And we um, used an example, um, the Gokumole recipe <coughs> to demonstrate how git works. And uh, then we, did, we had an exercise. Then we learned about um, um, <coughs> Uh, yeah, first of all, we learned that we need to use Git. You need to start Git using. You don't have to configure server or anything. You start uh, install Git and then go to the folder and do the Git edit. Then you Git add, then commit. And uh, Git status always it's good to use Git status once in a while uh, and do before doing any any commits or adds. Uh, we check the status. Then we check the Git log and make the Git log one line and Git log uh, name only uh, to check the files and file names. Uh, and git show to see what happened in a show or in a <clears throat> in a commit. Uh, git move and git remove. We did not um, um, explicitly teach here, but I think you had uh, uh, learned about it in the breakout rooms. Uh, but let's see. So if you want to remove a file, um, uh, I'm going to then <clears throat> uh, file. Myfile.txt. We will get add my file. Git commit minus m um, including my file. So if you want to remove this file, one one uh, one thing to, one thing you could do is you could use the remove command. Uh, on your terminal, on your Linux terminal, or on a Windows machine, you could right click and delete. Let's say if I remove that, um, my file, then Git sort of get not that confused, but you know, Git don't, uh, it's not recommended Git practice. Status. Then the Git status will say, you know, it's just a file deleted. You know, what did you do? Um, you know, tell me about it. Because I was tracking this file, why did you remove it? Uh, let's say for the accidental remove, then you could use git check out my file. Then that file would appear back. No questions asked. The better way to do this is git remove my file. Then it would uh, stage it with status. To show that you know it's already um, in the staging phase, I could uh, deleting my file. Same way, like if you want to rename the file, you can say git move my file dot txt. My I hope this will work. You say png. Uh, Bad source um, ls. Okay, so I, I deleted the file. Um, let's 
log one line. Let's get back the file. Check out. Let, let's see whether, whether it's there in the in this uh, commit. It didn't have because that's the that's the point I deleted it. I'll get get it back from this place. So then you have this file. I want to rename it. So I'll do the git rename again. Now it's okay because the file is there. Git status to see how it is now. Git commit with a minus m dash m. It was an env file. <clears throat> git log one line git status. Right. So what I did was um, um, show you the how to rename a file with git move instead of just Unix move. And use git rm, uh, git rm instead of just rm. So the so the git will not confuse with some uh, something's git knows. Mm -hmm. um, then let's see. Then what we did. Was to uh, go through some um, details about the staging area. Diana did a very good explanation of uh, what the staging area is um, and uh, about interactive commit. Um, then uh, comparing that to a shopping cart, you know, uh, the git patch, and then git. Staging area, some more details. Here we learned about git add, git commit, and git diff staged, and git remove, git reset, and git check out. Then we moved on to this lesson. <clears throat> um, and then um, tomorrow we'll be learning about branches. Mm, that you would uh, take in the morning. Uh, more details about the branching, uh, and also uh, if you when you work with Git, um, uh, conflicts might happen. Two people might edit the same thing, and Git might not know which one to uh, keep and which one to uh, uh, get rid of. So Git conflicts are good things. Bad uh, conflict is a bad name for this. It should be like Git collaboration or something. You know, it, it's a way how to combine safely. Um, Images safely the the things you do without losing any information. Okay, so that's all for the Git 